Hello friends and welcome to a new needle lace video. If you're new here and you don't already know, I am on the journey to recreating this Worth gown. And to do so, I'm in the process of teaching myself needlepoint lace to recreate the Battenberg lace collar of the evening gown. I shared my first attempt at needle lace back in January, and if you want to see that video, you can click the link right here. And I definitely recommend you check that out if you want to see a closer look at the stitches that I'm experimenting with. So today's collar is my second time experimenting with needle lace. So if you are a professional lace maker, please be kind in the comments. I'm using two different resources to teach myself how to make point lace. The first is this book, Starting Needlepoint Lace, A Course for Beginners. The second book is a how-to lace manual from the 1900s, which I squealed when I first found. Um, so I will leave the link for that down below. It is free online and is definitely a very good resource if you're wanting to get into lace making for yourself. So with all of that aside, let's start lacing. The tools I'm using are as followed. Crochet thread, size 10 or 12. A regular sewing thread. Battenberg lace tape, mine is three millimeters wide. All point needles, regular sewing needle, two layers of sturdy backing fabric, a cotton is fine, and a lacing pillow. There are different types of lacing pillows and you can see how I made this one in the link above. The first step is creating the lace pattern. I designed mine after looking through many different types of lace on Pinterest. With my design drawn up, I then traced it onto a second piece of paper so I wouldn't have to worry about royally messing up and then needing to redraw my design from scratch. Once that was complete, I then attached it to my base fabric with a running stitch around the edge. A good rule of thumb for the base fabric is two to three layers that is at least three inches larger than your lace design. The next step is basting the lace tape to the design. I discovered this too late for my project, but it is recommended that you finish the raw edge of the tape before basting it in place. A basting thread similar to the color of your work is also recommended, but is not a rule. When basting the tape to the pattern, the basting should follow the outer edge of the tape, as this will ensure the tape will nicely follow the curves. Also, stitches should be rather close and short to hold the tape in place. The Victorian book has a great section all in this process. Once the tape is basted in place, the next step is to draw in the loose inner edge. This can be done by gathering it or whipping along the edge to pull it in snugly. Once this step has been completed on all the loose areas, it is time to start adding the stitches. Since I explained the majority of these stitches in my previous video, I will only be mentioning the new things, starting with securing the thread. In my last video, I started with two buttonhole stitches, but this time I wove the tail through the tape towards my starting point and then secured it with a single button stitch. This makes for a less visible starting point, which is ideal for lace. Tying off the thread is done in the same way as tying on, but in reverse. A single buttonhole stitch and then weaving the loose ends through the tape.
the next new stitch is a spinning wheel or spider stitch. Now this is not one that is in my worth collar, but I really wanted to try experimenting with it. The pin in the center was not called for in the instructions, but I found it much easier to make it with the pin in place. Just a note here, I didn't actually do the center part correctly. Each time the needle did a full circle around the center, it was supposed to alternate the over-under pattern so it would lock the threads in place. So instead of continuing with the over-under, over-under pattern, once I reached back to the starting point, I should have gone over-over and then continued with the over-under weaving. Another new stitch is the plain Russian or faggoting. The name of the stitch is different in both books, so I figured I would list both. This stitch is usually done in an area that is wider than this, but I needed something to attach this area together, so I decided to give it a try. And to finish off the center, I decided to add a faux pearl. The Worth gown has a ton of pearls attached to the collar, so I decided to add one to this collar for science and to see how well it would hold up. I have yet to find any information on how to attach beads to lace, so for now I'm just making it up as I go. And now comes the moment of truth, removing the collar from the backing fabric. This portion is both exhilarating and terrifying because you really don't know how it's gonna behave once it's off the backing fabric. So I've actually lost count of how many hours I actually spend on this, but I am very, very happy with how it turned out. And I definitely see myself using this for history bounding in the future. Now, something I didn't actually video was the ends of this and how I put the closure on it. So the ends of it, it is just two lengths of Battenberg lace that I just whipped together. And then for the end, it's just a button and uh, a button opening. So <laughs> it's very easy to do. So yeah, I'm very, very happy with how this came out. And I definitely see myself using again in the future. So, oh, it's so pretty. <laughs>
So I did notice that as I worked my way through the project, my tension did start to gradually improve, which I noticed that the last time I was working with lace. So because there was such a long time period between my project in January until now, um, I kind of lost the, the feel of like the different tension. But as I worked back with it again, it slowly came back to me and I kind of got into a groove. And you can definitely see like the tension on this side is much better than this side, which is where I started. So a couple people did message me on the last video saying that they were looking for lace tape, but they couldn't find any because it just came up with a bunch of wig making stuff. So I've linked two websites down below with lace tape. I know Morgan has bought from one of them. So I know one of them is good. I don't know about the other one, but they both have the Battenberg lace tape if you're interested in trying this for yourself. Also, speaking of Morgan, we are actually doing a collaboration of lace making over on her channel. So I definitely recommend you head over there and check it out. Thank you for watching today's video and thank you for everyone who has subscribed and commented, liked. It really helps get my videos out there to more people, especially live videos like this because I really want more people to learn about lace making. So that is everything for today and I hope you have a lovely day. I'll see you next time. Bye.